uh, morning, Matt. Uh, Good morning. How this morning. How am I this morning? I am uh, I'm very well, actually. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a lovely sunny week. I've uh, enjoyed some lovely walks up on the hills near where I live, and a bit of gardening, a few ice creams. Yeah, it's been a good. It's been a good week. How about you? Good. Yeah, I've enjoyed the uh, the weather too, and ice creams and uh, walks as well. So yeah, it's been it's been good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Chloe, what are we looking at today? What is our theme today? Okay, so today's theme is carrying on with the theme of worship, but in particularly looking at the use of how uh, words. <laughs> words, looking at how the use of words. Nobody's not very good at using words. <laughs> <laughs> this bodes well for our session on words. It does. So we're looking at how we can worship using our words. Um, and so hopefully we'll unpack that a little bit as we go along. Thank but you. first of all, we have a bit of a challenge, a bit of a game, don't we? Okay. Yes, so. we do. So... The way this is going to work is uh, we, have, uh, we have selected five words from the English language um, and uh, we are going to offer you two, uh, what, what the word means, to two uh, different versions of what the word means. And you've got to work out which one is the right one. OK, yeah. so uh, the first word and we'll put the word up on, on screen just uh, above us here. Uh, the first word is duffing. Um, Chloe, what do you think duffing means? Okay, so I think the word duffing means the body of a fisherman's artificial fly. Hmm. Okay, well, but I think it means, right, the word, you, the word for like the bits and bobs that kind of birds put in their nest. Hmm. Which one at home do you think is the correct, uh, correct, like, meaning of that word? You have a bit of discussion, pause it if you want to, but no looking on Google until we've found the answer. Should we do a little five, four, three, two, one countdown? Oh, yeah. Okay. Stop, good. Right. So the right answer was actually Chloe's one. It is the body of a fisherman's artificial fly. So well done if you got that right. And lucky if you thought I was the fount of all knowledge. Yes. Hmm. Give us another one, Chloe. Okay, so another one. The word is spong. Spong. Okay, so this is actually the name of a West African beetle, the spong beetle. West African, okay. Or is the spong a piece of land shaped like a tongue? Which one do you think it is? Let's have the timer again. Stop. Okay, spong, what is it, Matt? So it's actually, uh, it was your answer again. It was a piece of land shaped like a tongue. Not a, not a beetle, what a surprise. So again, well then if you uh, recognize that Chloe knows a little bit more than, than me. I don't know. Right, okay, so the next one is pricket. Okay, mm, okay. Just above, the word is above there. So yeah. is it the, uh, a spike that you would put a candle on? Or is it... An instrument used for harvesting apples. Oh, from the tree. Pricket. Okay, pricket. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Okay, uh, Chloe, what is the correct answer? The pricket is a sharp spike used to hold a candle. It was me. I was right. Oh, excellent. Okay, cool. Uh, give us another one, Chloe. Okay, the next one is wardrobe. 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 Oh, okay, right, okay. So, uh, this is, uh, this, this word means, um, it's actually the name for uh, badger droppings. Badger droppings. Yeah. Okay, I think it's the name for the hole in a tree where a squirrel might live. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got five seconds, go. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, uh, the right answer, the right answer. It's actually badger droppings, Chloe. Really, was... word drove. <laughs> word drove. Badger droppings. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. Um... Okay, so this is the last one, and this is not how we planned it, because I wasn't meant to say this one. That was oh, no, I'll say, I'll say it. You said wardrobe. It's fine. I'll say it. Okay. Okay. What is this last one? Because I can't say this word. 
What do you mean? You're so good with words. Uh, so, <clears throat> so funny. Trisodecophobia or trisodecophobia. Okay. Okay. What uh, do you think I it means, think Chloe? It is the fear of a three-legged animal. Okay. Um, or is it uh, the fear of the number thirteen? Ooh. Okay. Five. Four, three, two, one. Stop. It is okay. actually the fear of the number 13. Yes, I got three right, Chloe, and you got two in your face, Chloe. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you at home if you managed to get all them right. Um, yeah. Some of them were quite difficult, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah. So I, I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if anyone got them all right. Oh yeah. Anyone just such a brainiac or maybe played all of Boulder Dash before? Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe they've just memorized the whole of the game Boulder Dash. Yeah. Um, yeah. So oh. we have got some discussion questions for you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll put them up on screen and have you know, pause the video on the uh, on the questions and whoever you're watching this with, um, yeah, just have a little chat about these different questions if you're watching this by yourself. Give someone a call. Um, but yeah, so here, here are uh, our discussion questions for today. I wonder what your uh, funniest uh, word is. Uh, <laughs> there's probably quite a few that make you just chuckle when you say them. Um, I won't ask you what yours is, Chloe, uh, but it's fine. So last week, we looked at uh, worship and music um, and how uh, within music, like words are involved, but they're not necessarily always involved. Um, and so this week we're looking at uh, how we worship uh, with our words. And uh, to me, it really struck me that like the way we express ourselves, the way we kind of let people know how we're feeling is through our words. So I don't know if you know this about me, Chloe, but I love Leeds United. Right? And I... I you, I don't even know how I can see now. <laughs> you, you, no one would have guessed it, right? Um, and I want to tell people who listen, um, and hopefully when I'm talking about football, it's obvious by my words that, that I love Leeds. And, and like, this is, more, this is even more true um, with my, my love for my wife, Lauren. Um, I want her to know how much I love her. Uh, I want others to know how much I love her. And so I'll say it again and again and again. Um, and this is even more true, right, um, for my love of God. Like, in my relationship with God, uh, my worship kind of works its way out of me in my words. I express how I feel about God through my words. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's that, that yeah. makes sense, right? And it's really, it's a really good point, like how we can use our words to worship God and how, uh, and how your words describe that and um we can see in the bible um that uh david does is a great example of this i know we've <laughs> done a whole series on him over the summer but he's just he's written so much of the bible to be honest um is how in the if we look in the book of psalms how he uh writes his psalms is how he expresses his worship to god and we can see if we read different psalms i've got a couple here it shows us how he's feeling so for example in psalm 145 he says i will praise you god and my god and king and will and always honor your name i will praise you each day and always honor your name you are wonderful lord and you deserve all praise because you are much greater than anyone can understand so that's an example of a praise of David and how he's put it into words about how he's feeling thankful and praise yeah. about God. Like in, inside, he's like, oh, God is amazing. And I just want to say this, you know, and then he, so he's, he's kind of written that down, which is incredible. I read, I read something just, I know this is, this isn't in the script, but like I read something that um, said that uh, in the Psalms, God left us uh, like a songbook, but with no music. And so it's about the words. And so like you were saying, Chloe, like the words that David writes can really help us worship God. Mm. and um the way that we can express how we feel about god can be through the use of psalms like what david did expressed and if you look particularly look um at psalm 145 and perhaps the ones before it like 144 
143, all of those ones around it, in my Bible, it tells me what the psalm is about. So, for example, Psalm 142 says it's a prayer for help. So David wrote it and how he was feeling and asking for God's help. Um, Psalm 143 is a prayer for a time of danger um, or a prayer for God's protection. And so we can tell God how we're feeling through writing a prayer, through writing a poem, through writing a psalm, through writing a letter. And they can be our praise and our worship to God. So how we're thankful and how we want to sing him praises. But also we can communicate with God how when we're not feeling like that. Mm. So there's some of these like when David was asking God for help, when he was in danger, when he was feeling sad. You can also write those down and write them to God Mm. in that way. That's really cool. So have we got... um... Have we got anyone to help us kind of use our words? Yeah. So Joel and Eva have have done something for us to show us how they use their words to praise and worship God. Hello. So um, Chloe asked us to um, come up with a poem for you. So we have found one by somebody called Steve Turner and it's called Who Made the World? And it's a conversation between a teacher and a pupil, okay? And it goes like this. Who was it who made the world, sir? A man brought creation about. Who set off the explosion, sir? I don't know, they're still finding out. Did this big bang make you deaf, sir? It happened a long time ago. How do you know it happened, sir? A man in a book told me so. Who was the man in the book, sir? A man who looked up in the sky. How do you know that he knew, sir? Because I believe him, that's why. Who was it made me and you, sir? The creature crept out of the sea. Who was it made the creature, sir? The creature just happened to be. Why did it creep from the sea, sir? Thought it was time for a change. How did it grow arms and legs, sir? I know, it sounds awfully strange. Where do we go when we die, sir? Don't know, but I'm sure that it's great. Who was it made the place great, sir? No talking now, children. It's late. And <laughs> sorry. So, um, this poem is by Benjamin Zephaniah, and it's called Good Hope. I believe there is enough food on this planet for everyone. I believe that it is possible for all people to live in peace. I believe we can live without guns. I believe everyone is important. I believe there are good Christians and good Muslims, good Jews and good not sures. I believe there is good in everyone. I believe in people. If I did not believe, I would stop writing. I know every day children cry for water and every day racists attack. Still every day children play with no care for colour. So I believe there is hope, and I hope that there are many believers believing there is hope. That is what I hope, and this is what I believe. I believe in you. Believe in me. Uh, Thank you, uh, Joel and Eva, for sharing that with us. Um, I hope that's maybe inspired some of you guys from at home too. Uh, Matt, what are we going to do now? So, can I, as we as we end this video, we've got, got a bit of a challenge for you uh, for this week. Thinking about worship and words, uh, our challenge is have a go. Just have a go. Like what? Um, however, uh, whether you write one word or whether you can write thousands, um, what we want you to do is we want you to um, tell God how you're feeling. Whether you write that down, whether you um, whether you just say it out loud, uh, whether you say it in your head. Um, Give it a go. Realize that you're like God wants to hear your words. Okay. Uh, so that is your challenge this week. Um, whether you put it in form of poetry and you can make it rhyme, whether it's a letter and you just like, dear God, today I feel like this. Yeah. Or whether you, like Matt said, one word, or whether it's just a whole scramble of words that make no sense. Uh, but they make sense between you and God. And that is the main thing. So, um, yeah. Have a go. And if you have written some poetry and whatever, or not poetry, but if you have written whatever you like and you'd like to share it and you feel you want to, then 
please do share it with us yeah. but there's no pressure to do so in that absolutely way. not no um so yeah thank you for joining us this week um we really hope that um yeah you re- you realize uh you know how how we can use our words to worship god um and yeah next week do we have to wear our painting clothes chloe uh yeah i think we might need to okay so before we go though let's pray all right Good plan. I'll, I'll i'll pray for us as we leave all right god i thank you that um you've been with us this morning and i pray that as we go about our week and um, we realize uh yeah, just, just how powerful our words can be, God. Um, and God, I pray that we, we learn to use those words to, uh, to talk to you, to praise you, to ask you for help. Um, yeah, so God, I, I pray this week that you really um, help us to use those words. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week.